What's up everyone, TJ here. We're out riding Snow Summit in Bear Mountain, and this week I've partnered up with Snowboard Magazine to do a freestyle board test. Today we're checking out the Burton Good Company. This is a new snowboard on the Burton lineup for the 22-23 season. And in this video, I'm gonna go through all the tech and share my thoughts on how it feels out on snow as well. Let's check it out. All right, for reference, before we get into the tech, I'm five foot 10, I weigh around 150 pounds, and I rode the Good Company in a 152. This is a new snowboard on the Burton lineup for the 22-23 season, and it's a true twin freestyle focused board with a twin flex. You're also gonna get a camber profile on this board, true camber, so full camber from contact point to contact point, gonna come through with that more energetic, locked in and powerful feel, that classic camber feel for those of you that enjoy that. It's built with a lightweight core, which is always nice, especially for more freestyle focused riding to give you a more maneuverable feel in the park. You're also gonna find the staples from Burton in this snowboard, like their squeeze box tech, which is a milling of the core, thicker and thinner in certain places to customize the flex pattern. Their infinite ride tech, where they basically put the board in a machine that flexes it over and over and pre-breaks it in for you, so it maintains a consistent feel for the entire life of the board right from day one as well as the channel system you're gonna find on all Burton boards. It's gonna give you those unlimited stance width options and it's still compatible with pretty much every major binding out there. And a centered base, which is a higher end base material known to be harder, faster, and more durable. And that's gonna be it for a quick tech breakdown here for the good company. Let's talk a little bit about how this board actually felt out on the mountain. <laughs> First, let's talk about the flex. So I'd say for the good company, it's just a little bit on the softer side of medium. It's a really solid all around park flex. You can definitely get some presses going with this one, but you are gonna have to battle that camber. It's a little bit more challenging to find those balance points, but uh, definitely still one that's fun for butters and flat ground type tricks if you're into that. I will say with the full camber, you do wanna be aware of your edges, making sure you're not clipping up if you're doing that type of stuff. Uh, always making sure that your downhill edge doesn't have weight on it, otherwise that's gonna dig right into the snow, doesn't really have any benefits to make the board less catchy. From the flip side, you do get that more precise feel from the camber. I also found this one came through with a nice energetic snappy feel to it. That's actually one of the biggest highlights for me with the good company. I think that true camber profile really allows you to maximize the tension that you're able to load up in this snowboard and in turn is going to offer a very energetic feel, especially considering that it's not super stiff. I'd say it has above average pop and has a lot of snap to it. I also want to talk about the carving experience on the good company. If you're a more experienced rider and you're out there exploring the resort and you start to push it, this is a board where you're definitely going to be able to find the limits. At higher speeds, you might find a little bit of chatter in the nose and tail, but overall it is pretty capable. It's a board that does feel better at more moderate speeds in my opinion and can handle variable snow and choppy conditions as long as you're not mocking down the hill. Uh, it's not going to be a board that's conducive to aggressive carving either. It's fairly narrow. The 152 comes in at a 250 millimeter waist width with a pretty average side cut. Uh, so definitely not a carving specialist by any means, but still a lot of fun out there exploring the resort, particularly with a more freestyle approach to your riding. And when it comes to park laps, I feel like that's where this board is gonna shine the most. I mean, that's what it was designed to do after all. And it has a great all around park feel to it. It's soft and playful enough to have fun on smaller features and like mini shred type stuff. You can get presses going and work on more technical tricks. And it's gonna help with that kind of progression as well. And working your way up to like small medium type jumps and getting your legs under you in the air as well. Really solid board for just all around freestyle progression. I wouldn't necessarily say that this is a strong choice for stepping up to the largest features in the park where you start to find those higher impacts and situations where stability starts to become a lot more useful, but it is gonna be a really fun one with a great feel for just general park progression, even for those of you that are just getting into the park. Overall, I'd say the Good Company is an energetic, well-rounded freestyle board for those of you that are gonna spend the majority of your time on it in the park or doing more freestyle focused stuff. Something you can just play around on anywhere and has a nice comfortable feel to it. So if you're looking for something like that, consider the Burton Good Company. Personally, I enjoyed this one a lot and is a board I'll probably spend a little bit more time on in the 22-23 season. 
If you want to read more about this snowboard, I'll have it linked down in the description below. And if any of you guys have had a chance to ride it already, let us know what you think about it down in the comments. You can leave any questions for me down there as well. Drop a like if you got some value. Subscribe to the channel if you're new here. I appreciate all of you guys. Thank you for watching these reviews and we will see you in a new one next time. Take care, everybody. Oh, <laughs>